Hi, everyone. My name is Raquel with RedmondMag.com, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us. The topic of today's webcast is Defend Against Active Directory Attacks That Leave No Trace, sponsored by Some Paris. Before we begin, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping details. Um, there will be a Q&A session towards the end of today's event, so please type any questions that you may have in the Q&A box. Additionally, Some Paris has provided a couple of links which correspond with today's event, so please take a moment to check those out. And then finally, this webcast is being recorded, so keep an eye out for a link in your email so that you can rewatch the presentation or share with a colleague. And now I'd like to introduce you to our speaker. Today we are joined by Tal Sarid, who is a senior solutions architect at Sim Paris. So we are in for a great event. And without further ado, Tal, I'll pass the time over to you to get us started. Hey, thank you, Raquel. So welcome, 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 everybody. Thank you for joining Defending Against Active Directory Attacks That Leave No Trace. My name is Tal Sarid. I'm a senior solution architect with Sim Paris. And prior to Sim Paris, I was with Microsoft for uh, 15 years primarily in the security and identity space. So we're going to kick off this session with a short poll. And the question for today's poll is, have you been the victim of a cyber attack in the last 12 months? Again, have you been the victim of a cyber attack in the last 12 months? And the answers are, yes, it was successful. Yes, but we were able to stop it before any significant damage was done. Probably, but we have no way of really, really knowing. And no, not that we are aware of. So we're going to give it a little bit. We'll let people answer the poll. And then we are going to kick it off. So take your time. Put in the answers. See that they are moving forward. And you know, feel free to put in if you I have no real way of knowing, that's okay as well. No problem, and we'll see where we are. We'll give it another maybe 10 seconds, and then we'll see the results of the poll. All right. Okay, let's move forward. So here, these are the results that we've had from, from our participants. So we have 3% almost. Yes, and it was successful. Uh, 17, but we were able to stop it. That's amazing. That's excellent. 5.7, no way of really knowing. Thank you for the honesty. And no, now that we know of, 74%, 74.3. Excellent. So today we're talking about Active Directory. And you know, Active Directory, of course, is at the core of every organization today. 90% of organizations still have Active Directory. Yes, there are some born to the cloud companies that they're not using the infrastructure. But I remember when I started at Microsoft, that was back in 1997, we were just transferring from uh, NT4, PDCs, BDCs to Active Directory. And I remember asking a full room of, of uh, enterprise customers, you know, who here has Active Directory? And you could see that people were, you know, no, nobody was really answering. And there was one guy in the front saying, me, 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 one of those early adopters in the front. And then every few years, I, I kept asking that question, who has Active Directory? And then more and more people. And now, of course, it's ubiquitous. Uh, many organizations, about a decade ago, a decade ago, they started to go to hybrid, going into Azure Active Directory, doing that, that hybrid thing. But we know that many of the attacks that are out there today, and they say every 11 seconds there, there's a ransomware attack, you know, somewhere, somewhere along the, the campaign, through that kill chain, they go through the Active Directory. And then if your Active Directory has the keys to the kingdom, then you're exposing your Azure Active Directory and then your other cloud services. And we saw that with the SolarWinds attack. So Active Directory is a key component that we still need to, to defend. And I think everybody here would agree that large organizations around the world, they're still going to be on Active Directory, probably you know, maybe in the next decade, but at least for the next five years. Just getting that global in infrastructure replaced is a, is a big, big uh, project. So if I jump over here, we have the various attacks that, are, that have gone through Active Directory. So we saw the SolarWinds attack, uh, you know, very, very popular attack. It took a long time to, to really identify that attack. It followed the same playbook as the non-Petya uh, attack in the Ukraine in, in 2017. And um, from there, you know, 
18,000 companies were affected around the world, and that was, that was pretty a big one. From there, we saw the Golden Samuel attack, where uh, Federation Services was, was uh, well, actually the private key was compromised there. So many things came out of that. Microsoft with Hafnium, we had the four uh, different zero-day attacks that uh, the, the cyber group was uh, the Chinese state-sponsored ch the cyber group alleged uh, were, were keeping and, and holding on for, for this attack. And this give, uh, gave remotely accessible uh, web shell and system privileges. Casia, uh, uh, a popular MSP platform and more and more organizations around the world, they're, they're moving to the MSP type of, uh, of support to manage their system. So their VSA system was compromised. And with that came, um, again, the numbers uh, vary, but probably, probably around 1,000 customers were affected worldwide. And that was from the Revel organization. Colonial Pipeline uh, affected many people on the East Coast. Um, that, that leveraged uh, Active Directory and Group Policy. So putting in uh, you know, different scripts within Group Policy, PowerShell, encryptors, different types of things within Group Policy. That was uh, done by DarkSide. Um, also, that was a big deal. You know, attacking critical infrastructure, we see that more and more, unfortunately, you know, bringing down power plants and critical infrastructure, water, things like that. Um, so Colonial Pipeline paid 75 bitcoins. Uh, they received, with some government intervention, they received, uh, they say, around 63.7 back. And uh, so, so they lost on that dollar value. I think if they, I hope they kept their Bitcoin for today, because the prices today are a little bit higher. Uh, today, I think it's around um, 56 or 57,000. So they might have even made money over there. So looking at these attacks, you have your active directory, right? And if you could become anything, then why wouldn't you want to attack something that's sitting right in the middle of your organization that manages your users, your groups, your permissions, your access, all that good thing. And we've seen attacks in the wild, like the Merce attack, where it started on a different system, but slowly encrypted, not slowly, within seven minutes, but that attack moved on to the domain controllers and just killed domain controllers around the world. And that's something that, uh, you know, once your Active Directory is down, pretty much every other system is down. And that can be something like uh, entrance into the building, you know, it could be just opening up the gates for the parking, and it could be something much more critical, like a, like a nuclear power plant or something like that. So there's many ways to, to avoid these defenses. And many organizations, what they do is they depend on, on Active Directory logging or even Windows logging. So there's many, many um, settings that are set within Active Directory, the, the event logging, where it's turned off by default. So you don't even get that. And when you turn it on, you get many events. So you have to sift through that. And then uh, if you're familiar with the MITRE ATT&CK framework, then there's different uh, areas where you have that actual uh, impair defense uh, tactic and then the sub-tactics. And I'll talk about that in a few seconds. So Sean Metcalf, the famous security researcher, he says, you know, ask yourself these questions. Are you logging the correct type of data? Are you logging the correct event IDs? Let me go jump over here. Apologies, I didn't uh, move the, the slides. So are you logging the correct, correct event IDs? Um, are you seeing, you know, all the types of things that you need? So now today in this defense and depth strategy, you need to get the EDR, you need to get the logging. But if the logging can be bypassed, then you need additional uh, ways to enrich your, your seams and then if you're even sending that off to a seam, right? Watching this big amount of logs and data. So like a seam, a Splunk, a Azure Sentinel, getting that into that system, doing the correlation, finding anything that's anomalous, and then taking action. Today, we know that there's a, a shortage of, of people that can sit and, and take on maybe thousands of events today. So I mentioned the uh, MITRE ATT&CK framework. So here, if you go to MITRE, MITRE ATT&CK uh, GitHub IO, and you go to the attack net navigator, uh, if you're not familiar with this tool, this is an amazing tool that has these techniques across the board from reconnaissance and then all the way to impact. And in, in this tool, what you can do is you can do a search for any type of, uh, of area. So if you put in auditing or events or something like that, then you'll get something and you could light this up in, in any color that you want. So right, right here, I emphasized it in red. So this is the uh, defense evasion, um, technique category, and then you have the subcategories. So this is very powerful because when you go in and you, you look at the different uh, sub-techniques, you could jump into one of these 
and then see different uh, procedure examples. You could see any mitigations that are known throughout the, the, the world. So here, for example, APT29, one of these groups in the wild, they used audit pool to prevent collection of audit logs. Uh, over here, we have Threat Group 3390, where they used App Command. And these two tools, they're built-in tools within the operating system, right? So they're leveraging tools that are already there, so they don't need to install anything. They're just using those logs in order to be able to bypass that. There's a great document by Microsoft, and I have the link over here, about the uh, SolariGate uh, DLL that was used in the SolarWinds attack. And this is a, an amazing breakdown of the entire attack end-to-end. -end. And there's just one area that caught my eye here, because uh, during this campaign, they wrote here that before running intensive and, and continued hands-on keyboard activity, the attackers took care of disabling the event log using audit ball and then re-enabling afterward. So they come in, they run something that's already there, and then there's no auditing. That auditing doesn't get picked up to the seam if, if you're even looking at that, and then they re-enable later so nobody knows you know, what's happening. It's just a, a glitch in the system. So there's different attacks in the wild, and, and uh, these are getting more and more popular. Uh, Mimikatz started out as an active directory research tool. Uh, one of the attacks is using the DC shadow to inject fake inter information into the active directory. So when you create a fake domain controller in order to push out that information, that can be detected. Today, there's ways to detect that. But if you're using, um, if you're pushing changes via the replication using this fake domain controller, then that's not detected. If the attacker is bringing his own machine, if somehow he's on the network, uh, VPN, wireless, whatever, whatever it is, if they're on the machine, then you don't even have an agent on that machine picking up those event logs. So that's something that can be a little bit tricky. Here, there's a few ways to detect that rogue domain controller. One is to look inside network traffic, and you're looking for, for entries like DRS add entry, DRS replica uh, add, uh, get NCC changes for the naming context. So that's something if you have different tools that are looking inside the packets, you could look for these entries. There's a, a tool called the DeerSync. It's an API, actually, where you can write some code in C++. I gave an example here where you could look at something called replication cookies, and you could monitor changes in there. Uh, so these, these mechanisms are, are a little bit complex, and, and later on I'll show you uh, an easier way to do it with one of our tools. Uh, you could baseline the NTDDS DSA and see for, look for any changes in there. Look for any SPNs that are happening on systems. That's one of the uh, um, telltales of, of a DC shadow attack. And then there's a few objects that you can turn on. So these are off by, de by default, unfortunately. So the 4928 and, and the 4929, so you would look for the um, directory replication events. So if I, if I jump over here, you'll see where this is. This is when you, you set up your um, advanced audit policy, then you go to, to DS access, and then you turn on your directory service replication. So you'll see here that by default, this, there's no auditing. This is turned off. So the reason, again, that, that uh, most of these are turned off by default is because this just creates a lot, a lot of um, um, information and, and, and things that, uh, you know, false positives within the system. But you need to know what you're looking for. So we mentioned group policy. So the Ryuk attack was interesting because uh, uh, actually leveraging a system like the group policy to put in something in a, in a startup script, uh, shutdown script, log on, lock off. So one of these attacks used the Ryuk ransomware to put um, a Ryuk um, encryptor actually inside the group policy. So once the machine, or once a user logs in, or once that domain controller reboots, then that machine is going to be encrypted. So that's something that, by default, you could see that there was a change maybe in group policy if you're looking at logging, but it's very hard to see exactly what that change was, and I'll show you an easy way to do that. But it's very important to be able to, you know, very fast and not uh, start uh, comparing different things, you know, manually to try and find exactly what was changed and even roll that back. So that's something that I will show you how we do that. And finally, the zero logon attack, right? So this is something that it, al it always amazes me the way that there's an attack like this in the wild and organizations around the world, if you ask them, uh, are you patched? And there, there's been a patch out from the beginning of the year. And when you actually scan the Active Directory, 
you'll see that there are some sometimes uh, a few domain controllers that do not have this patch, and then that's the weakest link, right? And it's very easy for, for a regular user to pull the Active Directory to see which domain controllers don't have this patch, and then they would come in through here. So you're using the uh, so you're 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 giving these net logon messages to the domain controller, and then finally what you're doing is you're just wiping out the or or zeroing out the the password for the domain controller. Then you're pulling in all your secrets, right? Like the curve TGT to do different golden ticket attacks. And then once you have those secrets, you can change the password back. So hopefully you won't get uh, noticed within the system. And I'll show you a way that we can uh, easily scan your network just to see that everything is patched properly. So pretty much it looks like this, right? This is the uh, where's Waldo in, in this picture. And this picture is a little bit fuzzy, you know, on purpose because it's, it's hard to find Waldo in this uh, sea of people. But it's also a little bit fuzzy because we need to know exactly what we're looking for and then to correlate that. But if anybody was wondering, he's, he's over here on this side. It's very hard to see Waldo. So moving forward, how do we combat these attacks? So it's easy to, to script. You know, you could, there's a lot of people that like to script things and then uh, monitor for different changes. For example, any changes, any membership changes within your privilege group. So you could script that, try to do a compare, and then hook that up to some kind of a system. You have to debug that. You have to maintain those types of script. But, you know, it's possible to do that. That's something that can be done. There's tools that are pretty cool, like, uh, for example, the uh, AD Timeline tool. You might be familiar with this tool. So this is a tool where... Um, you can actually take a look at different um, uh, replication information that's happening. So in addition to auditing, which is great if you have it and, and if uh, the attackers are not bypassing or corrupting or turning that off, or you, if you don't even have it, AD replication is a big part of defense of, of a modern system because the, the active directories are multiple master systems that they, they, they as their proper function, they send out um, replication changes throughout the system. Each object has its own USN update sequence number. That way, if a domain controller didn't get the latest updates, then it will ask for the USN number. It'll see that it doesn't have those updates, and those uh, changes are going to come. So in the replication API and in the metadata, there's a lot of information that's very, very useful in order to see these changes, to see what has changed. So in the replication API, we could see what has changed from what. What's the old value? What's the new value? When did this change? Things like QSM. So this tool, this is a free tool that you could get from GitHub, the AD timeline. This is a good tool that can gather all this information. And it looks at schema, objects, trust, uh, deleted users, DP API secrets. It has a lot of categories that it's looking for. So if you feel like you, you want to take this and then script this into a solution, and maybe even send that, send that off to your seam so you have that integration. So this is a, a very key part of defending the Active Directory. Uh, there's commercial ser uh, services like we have, and this is where, where uh, I'm going to start to come into our solution and how we do this. And I, I think under the covers, what's important is just the, the, you know, the logic, the strategy about how we're taking this information. So one thing is that we want to gather information uh, from the replication stream in addition to the other defense in depth uh, you know, areas that we want to uh, enrich our seam with. So we're looking also for things that are hidden from the, from the security event logs because, again, every single change that is happening within the directory. If an attacker, most attackers, if they attack a system, they're depending on the, on the fact that these domain controllers are going to propagate their, their changes throughout the system. So that's one thing. The second thing is that we're taking that replication data and we're moving it off to a SQL database. So that information is stored in the database in a searchable format, and that way you can compare values over time. So for example, if you have a, an attacker in the system that they've been there for three months, for six months, for nine months, you're able to scan all that information to see every single change that that attacker did. In addition, you're able to do this forensic analysis and to start to match, match you know, look for anything within an active directory. So changed by SAM account names, by attribute, by just different things. You can look for changes within the DNS. You can look for changes within group policy. And all this is very important when you're defending the active directory. And, and then a very uh, key feature of, of this ability is, is the ability to do an undo. So for example, somebody changes something like the SID history, which we'll see in a second in the demo, 
So that that's a protected attribute where even Microsoft doesn't let you uh, change that, not in ADSI edit, not in the Active Directory users of computers. So that's something that you're able to roll back if that changes. Or I'll show you how uh, you could, in group membership, if something changes in there, you can either undo that or you can automatically undo that. So that could actually save the day. So this goes beyond SIM. It also gives you changes to DNS and group policy. So again, being able to to pinpoint a change in DNS when somebody redirects a server somewhere. So it's, it's not enough to know that DNS has changed. Now you have to start hunting for what exactly was that change. And then with a the click of a button, being able to roll that back. So I'm going to continue to our next poll. So our poll for now, and this is our second poll, um, what's the level of confidence that you have with your current approach that you can detect these types of attack. So are you very confident, somewhat confident, somewhat worried, very worried, or maybe we're screwed? So what's your level of confidence? So there, you know, there's so many attacks, you have to know what you're looking for, you have to turn auditing on. Uh, some organizations can bypass. You might not be looking at the metadata uh, stream or that information, the replication metadata. So what is your level of confidence? And we'll give it a few more seconds here as the votes are coming in. And Raquel will let us know. When we're moving forward, again, I think I'll give it another 10 seconds. What's your level of confidence? And three, two, one. All right. So here are the results. Very confident. I like that because we all know that in security, there's, there's no 100%. You know, we have to have this defense in depth, multi layer approach. That's good. Somewhat confident is great. That means you're already looking at the right things and you're focused, somewhat worried. And unfortunately, in these days, when every 11 seconds there's a, this, these ransomware attacks and everything is fully automated, right? This is uh, advanced AI. Uh, this is well, not everything, but there's a, a very advanced attackers today. Very worried and we're screwed. Thank you for the honesty. Perfect. Excellent, excellent. So. Without further ado, I'm going to jump here into, into our product. This is the Directory Services Protector. And what, what this tool does is it's built to monitor, detect, and respond to, uh, to specifically to Active Directory environments and now Azure Active Directory. But this all started with on-premise Active Directory and taking that, that, that very key um, uh, replication metadata and then being able to store that, search that, undo that, uh, and autom automatically undo that. So we're, we have a few modules in here. One module is a continuous vulnerability assessment. So what we're looking for are indicators of um, just the baseline security for Active Directory. And um, uh, towards the end, I'll give you also give you a nice demo, but I'll also give you our free tool that you could use to search that net log on and all different vulnerabilities, but also to take a good snapshot of your, your Active Directory in the baseline. So this is a free tool, it's our gift to you, and I'll, I'll talk about it and I'll walk you through it in, in, a, in a few slides. So continuous vulnerability, vulnerability assessment, we're looking at the baseline, we're looking at any indicators of exposure where your system might not be configured properly, and then we're looking for any indicators of compromise where you might have somebody that's already on the system. So the tamper-proof tracking comes from that replication API. Again, if, if a domain controller goes down for any reason, then when it comes up, it's going to update to that USM. So we have a patent and technology, which is also a replication partner, and that's an agent that sits on two domain controllers in each domain. So that's, that's, uh, there's no man in the middle of the attack because it's local, and it's picking up every single change and then putting that into the database. Real-time security alerts. We spoke a little bit about the auto remediation. I'll show a demo of that and then compliance reporting, just ensuring that the system is, is compliant and moving forward. So just a little bit about the, the architecture over here. This is one of the dashboards within the product. 
So we have our DSP management server over here, and this is a software solution. This could be uh, uh, virtual, it could be physical. This is usually a four by four machine and a SQL database. This could be a, an organizational database, or this could be um, a, a, a standalone, separate tier zero type of secure database that you're using only for the system. If I um, look at the DSP agent, what we're doing here is we're looking at the replication information, putting that into the database. And then we have a very lightweight audit agent, which is looking for nine specific cycles. That's the security access control list. And that's telling us who made the actual change. So this is optional because Microsoft doesn't include who made the change within the replication API. Um, but we highly recommend it because that, that's something that's very important to know who made that change, correlate that in the database, so you're able to search who made the change throughout time. So you can see here at the bottom, we're looking at all the partitions within the system. And again, every object type, every attribute, everything and all that is being uh, saved and correlated. So, so this is the replication data, this is the cycle information that's being correlated in the database, and then the single pane of glass, that's where you see everything. So I'm gonna do a, a short demo here that I recorded, and I'm gonna take you through a small walkthrough of a simulated attack, and then how that's gonna look within the system. All right. So here what I'm doing is I'm firing up uh, Mimikatz. This over here. And I'm going to use uh, SysInternals PS get SID. I'm going to look for the domain admin's well-known SID. That's that 512 at the end. And I'm going to take this SID and I'm going to inject it onto the SID history. Again, that's the SID history that Microsoft uses for migrations. Very powerful attribute that Microsoft doesn't want you messing around with if you're not doing a migration. So we'll run the uh, LSA DC shadow. Make this a little bit bigger over here. And again, so writing DC shadow, I'm gonna take that SID and I'm gonna put it onto the SID history attribute over here of the bad actor. And then again, as part of this attack, what we do is we create a fake DC, we register it, and then we push that out to the domain controllers, and then we unregister the, that domain controller. So in and out. So we'll push the change. It's gonna do an RPC binding on this side, and then on the right-hand side, once we do the push, we'll see here that performing registration, and then performing push, and then unregistering the server. So now this, this user has that power, so he's not gonna be in the domain admins group, but he will have that power to be a domain admin or to make changes onto the system. So the next step is to jump onto the domain controller with this bad actor account, And here, when I come onto here, just gonna run a, a few things here on the machine. I'm just gonna quickly here, I open server manager just to show that we're on the DC. You could see the IP addresses and all that good information. And then DC one, you could see IP addresses. You could see a little bit about the configuration, but that's pretty much this part. So now I'm gonna open up a few of the screens, open it up quickly. So users and computers, I'm gonna open up a little PowerShell script that's gonna make some changes in the directory. And of course, this is just to, uh, to show what it looks like in the directory and how, how the replication metadata is picked up and put into the database. So here again, they're not a domain admin. If I go here to the attribute editor and I look for SID history on this bad actor. So that well-known SID is here. If I try to delete it, then you can't delete it in the UI. So Microsoft doesn't let you do that. So even it's even hard to, to get rid of that uh, SID history change. So 
moving forward here, what I could do is I could look at the domain admins, I could try to target them, I could do different type of things. In a few seconds, what I'm gonna do uh, in this attack, I'm going to just delete everybody. So that could be a very bad day, right, for these domain admins. So here in this script, I'm going to clean the log, disable an account, uh, remove a user, remove an OU with everything inside, change a DNS record, change site information, and then just different types of descriptions, addresses, roles, different types of attributes on that object. And it could be anything, right, on user objects. So once this uh, loads up, we'll run that. And then here in group policy, like we mentioned before, like the Ryuk ransomware, I'm just going to very quickly go here into the default domain controller policy. Over here, we'll edit it. And then very quickly, we'll just change one of the scripts. So we'll jump here into policies, window settings. And I could change any of the security settings, TLS, things like that. But I'm going to go here to scripts. I'll choose a, a startup script. And now I have the added value because I'm on the domain controller. I could even access sysvol. I could put in a file there where everybody could access it which is always good if you want something to propagate. So I'm gonna jump here into sysvol. I'll look in, inside the scripts and I already have my Rio ransomware in there. Excellent. I'll do okay, apply. And then the last part over here is to run that script. So the script is gonna do some changes. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just see what this looks like within, within the DSP directory services protector. So the first thing that we could see here in this uh, dashboard is that we're running indicators across the system. So we have a, a global research security team where they're looking for these types of categories, group policy, Kerbero security, account security, AD delegation, and AD infrastructure security. So we have indicators that are looking for different things in each category, and we're also grading each category. So you'll see there's an overall score. Uh, you see the number of indicators that are run, and these are always being updated. So right now you can see that you have the indicator, when it was first found in the system, you have your MITRE ATT&CK framework tags, so you're able to continue that research on the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And for each and every indicator, we have a description of the attack, we have the likelihood of exposure or, or compromise, you have what the remediation step is for this specific attack, and for this, if you have a DC shadow attack, it's to take that machine offline. And then here in the results, you get the actual uh, result. So where did we find, when did we find that, that specific finding, and then what the actual result is. So over here, for this specific uh, indicator, it's a machine. So you have the exact DN for that machine, so you can continue your forensics. Or if it was something that was related to delegation or to groups or to privileges, you would see accounts or different types of objects in the system. If I go here into the changes screen, you can see here that this bad actor, the SID history, went from not being set to set, and I could click easily, I could do undo, and we're gonna undo that in the system, and then clean, turn the tables on the attacker. I could see here that this account was disabled, uh, IT admins were deleted, you could see here that James Kirk went from being an admiral to a captain, which we all know that he was an admiral. This uh, SAP service account was changed, now nobody knows how, what it was, and I could just quickly click undo, force a replication, and now we're just going to turn the tables, clean the system out, and now everything is going to go back to what it was. So that's very, very powerful because, again, we're keeping each and every change that is coming through the, the uh, replication API. Here I can look for any type of who made the change or who didn't make the change, which is very, very powerful. And I could do something like if you have a provisioning system, you could say if it wasn't changed by that system. Here I'm going to look for that specific machine. And you'll see I have a few entries, but I could go back in time, right? I could keep this for, for six months. I could keep this for a year, for however long I want to keep the information in the system. And I could see that bad actor was, was on this machine pwned. So now I could do a search. You know what? Give me every single change that this bad actor did in the system. And these are just saved searches that you could uh, easily save once you create one of these rules. So I'll go back in time, just a few months. I'll click OK. And then here... When I hit search, you'll see that all the operations that this user did within the system. So all those changes that he's been doing, 400 and something changes, I could easily click 
all of these changes and in one shot clean them out of the system. Or I could save this as a CSV, send that off to maybe the security team so they, they could do their forensics as, as they're uh, researching any issues within the system. If we go here in, into, uh, we'll close this out here. If we go in, into group policy, oh, here's a, a different thing. We're going to take those domain admins. We're going to kill them out of the system. Apply OK. Close this. So that's a bad day, right? They come in with their coffee. They, they want to log in in the morning and the accounts are, are deleted out of the system. That's not a, a fun situation. So here, if we go back into changes, I'll clear the, the filter, I'll do a search, and this takes a few seconds, it could take maybe up to five seconds, but we could see here that the domain admins went from being a member, the old value was these accounts, Kirk and friends, and now the new value is not set. So, so now these users, and the bad actor actually did this, if I click search, now that's being correlated in the system, but now I, I kicked off a tripwire or a notification rule that is bringing back those users into the system. So again, the same domain admins, when they come into the, in the morning with their coffee, they sit in front of the computer and you know they're ready to rock because they're back in the system. So now they just have an event that says this rule uh, triggered and now everybody's back into the system. So that's super powerful. If I go here into the GPOs, and I click that, then you'll see that I can see that today there was a change in my GPOs. I could do something like a compare, compare, just show me the difference or show me a side by side. So I'll show you both. I'm going to take two versions. The last version, show me the change that happened. And this is going to give me the exact change color coded where exactly. So anything in green is new, anything in red has been deleted. And I could see exactly the, the change that I have on the system. I could do a side by side view. So like GPMC type of view. So I could see here on the left, I could see like the, the last version of the settings. And then I could scroll here and color code it again very quickly. I could see the exact change. Anything in red was added. We could say in green was added. And then I could click that, hit restore. And then in a matter of seconds, fix that. So you're, you're, I know some people are thinking to themselves, that would save me so much time, you know, trying to troubleshoot different systems in the past. I know that when I saw that, I said, whoo, that's like a, an amazing feature. So, so this is the, uh, the, the DSP, and that's just a, a short demo of, of, uh, of how it works and how we're, we're leveraging that replication information in order to keep a, an, a watch, an eye on the system, be able to roll things back, DNS, group policy, and then the, those indicators that are looking at the, at the baseline security posture, indicators of exposure, and indicators of compromise. So here, uh, I'm going to show you, you know, now that we have this information in the system, we want to continue to enrich the other systems, right? Because the, the other systems uh, you know, in, are in no way not needed. We need the different SIEM systems and all those correlation systems, but we want to give them this quality information that they might be missing today, or maybe they're not getting because of some kind of uh, evasion techniques. So we want to take those event logs, whatever we have, group policy changes, DNS changes, and the AD replication stream, and then enrich our systems. So I'll show you a, a quick whirlwind tour of our integration with, with Seams and with Sentinel. And uh, this is very, very short. So coming into here, coming back into the system, there, there's actually three ways that we could send out information. One is using SMTP. So that's important, of course, to send out reports, to send out notifications into the system. This is a regular uh, you know, uh, configuration. Uh, we, we'd send out a daily report. We'd send out anything that has been tripped. We would send out you know, any changes. And we also have a, a reporting solution where you could send out just every Monday you know, uh, status. Here we have syslog integration, so you could send this off to your Splunk or any other system. We have a primary and a secondary, and this is feeding that quality information, which you might not be seeing today, into your SIEM solution. So this is, you could choose here which attributes, which partitions, so you could, you could fine tune this so you just get that quality information. And again, this is coming from every single partition within the Active Directory. Here we have our, our Azure Sentinel solution, where we're taking those security indicators, for example, this one of the Mimikatz 
uh, being lit up within the, within the product. So we're sending this again this quality indicator into Sentinel, where you're probably familiar with Sentinel today. You could see all the quality information as it comes in. You know where it is on the MITRE ATT&CK framework. If it's critical, when was the first time that this was found? What's the actual finding for this? And then, of course, in Sentinel, very easy to integrate this and to do an automated response. So you can come into here, choose a, a playbook, very easy to do playbooks in, in, in the system. So when this indicator comes in, we can take action, you know, what the condition is. And the condition here is this specific indicator. We have a, a specialized partial that's looking for that. And then here you could say run a playbook, uh, change the status, or maybe assign somebody to take care of this, or maybe assign somebody and then run the playbook and things like that. So that's very, very powerful within Sentinel. That's the Microsoft Sentinel solution. And I'm going to show you just quick, you know, uh, an easy playbook. If you haven't seen this before, um, very easy to create these logic apps and to create responses as, as they're happening. So here I go into automation and I'm going to click the playbook and I'm just going to edit this uh, simple solution. So this is, you know, not the, this is just a very, very simple solution that I just wanted to show some of the things that you could do. So if I go in here to edit, this jumps over to the Azure Logic Apps Designer. And then here, once this triggers, I can send an email. I can open up a, a team chat maybe with the SecOps group, say, hey, guys, something is happening here. And then I could choose any type of, uh, of, of trigger here, like, for example, the Azure Active Directory Identity and say maybe for this indicator, this is a risky user, lock him out, uh, you know, lock some, close the system, do something uh, as this is happening. So these responses are, are super important, you know, to get, and you could have uh, uh, general responses for anything that happens within the system. But the key part here is that we're taking that quality information, those indicators about your Active Directory, your on-prem Active Directory, which is really missing, and then sending that out into the cloud. We have a workbook here where you could see the different types of indicators and the number of them coming in. So you could see a large amount of them that have been coming in in the last week. And I could come into here and I could say, just give me you know, the last hour. I could say here on the MITRE ATT&CK framework, I'm just looking for anything that's, for example, the defense evasion and these two. And then just give me anything that was found, right? Not something that, that wasn't found and just anything that Everyone, it looks like we did lose Tal's audio really quickly. While we're waiting for him to hop back on, um, if you wanted to go ahead and check out the resource section, um, some pairs has provided some great materials for you to check out. So you can find those on the right hand side of your console. But we're working on getting Tal connected with us and hopefully he'll join shortly. Thanks, everyone. I hope everybody can hear me. Can you hear me, Raquel? Just let me know. Yes, we can hear you back. now. Perfect. Last connectivity.
So Shelly just wrote, I can hear you. I hope you can hear me. Was this from now? I hope it was. So I'm going to continue. Hopefully you can hear me. All right. Excellent. 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 Sorry about that. I don't know. I just got a notification saying you've been disconnected. So I hope it wasn't something that I said. If you go here into the uh, Azure Marketplace and you do a search for Simparis, you'll see here our Active Directory Forest Recovery. And that's a different product. That's for uh, uh, recovering your entire Active Directory Forest when you've been a uh, victim of, of a, a ransomware attack or total corruption or any type of thing like that. Now there's different types of attacks that where they encrypt the entire vSphere's or different uh, organization, different uh, attacks like that. So that's the Forest Recovery, different product. Here you go to the uh, Simparis Directory Services Protector Solution, and then that'll give you all that information on how to, to connect DSP up into the cloud. So I, I promised you this free gift that you can use today. This is a very, uh, uh, very powerful, and this gives you a lot of benefit very, very fast. So I'm going to show you how to set it up, and I'll show you what's inside. And I think that this, in, in a matter of you know, less than, than 30 minutes, probably a, a lot, lot less. You'll see in my environment, it takes a minute. You're going to get a lot of good information about your security posture. So over here, let's kick this off. And I'm looking over here now. So this is the, the Purple Knight tool. This is a free tool that you once you get it, it's going to be a zip file. and if you look inside the zip file, you have the user guide and the getting started guide there in there. So I'm going to jump here into the folder. And you'll notice the first thing at, that, that this is just a, an executable. So we're not installing anything onto the system. There's no setup. There's no registry left behind. Nothing like that. So if I go here to view and I change this, you'll see it's just an executable. So this is uh, going to run on any um, domain join machine, any Microsoft uh, supported system. If we go here into one of these scripts, for example, that DC shadow attack, you'll see everything exactly what we're checking. This is read only, so we are not we are not changing anything. All these uh, scripts are digitally signed, so you can research exactly what we're doing. They're read only, and so we want to run this tool as a regular user, and that's super important because the Active Directory is very very open. So any attacker, when they get their first foothold onto the system, then they're, they're going to be able to see all this good information. And of course, once they see the weakest links, that's the first place that they're going to attack. So I'm going to kick this off. And now what's happening is we're going to run a very short wizard. It's going to take those scripts, load them up into memory. It's going to verify those digital signatures, and then they're going to be good to go. Another important point is I think I didn't mention that there's no ET phone home. We're not sending any information to us. Or there's no diagnostics information. There's nothing going out. So this is all private. This is all personal. And nothing is being gathered at all. Read only. Any Microsoft supported operating system. Domain join machine. And you want to have execution policy, the rights, to run those uh, PowerShell scripts. So this is going to run. Once it finishes, it's going to bring up this nice uh, EULA. That's the first screen, the user agreement. Click Next. And then it's going to identify my little forest here. So I have a root domain and a child domain. So it's going to pick up those. And it'll pick, up, pick them all up. And you see here you can check for updates. There's another place where you can check for updates. I'll show that in a second. And then we have, again, those categories that we saw inside DSP. Delegation. You'll see that there's 75 indicators in this tool. And we update this about once a month. And 74 are selected. So if I go into this category, you'll see that zero logon vulnerability test where we're re-polling the Active Directory. So in a large environment, this might take a little bit of time. So you might want to run just this indicator alone. So run everything. For this test, I'm going to run everything with my zero logon. And this is where you can check for updates just to see that you have the latest uh, version of this tool with the most amount of indicators. And they're, they're always coming out. So you'll see here in every single category, there's different tests that we're running. And again, we're looking for that security posture just to see the best practices, old accounts, uh, passwords never expire, just things like things like on, on that level. And then we're looking for the indicators of exposure, anonymous access to the directory, uh, reversible passwords, things that once an attacker sees that, they're going to say, yep. So you might not have the attacker on the system, but 
you know, if they see that reversible password in GPO, that's the first place they're going to attack because that's the easy, the low-hanging fruit, right? So this is going to take in this environment, in this specific uh, run, it's going to take about a minute and six. And then what's, what's going to happen is we're going to uh, give a nice um, dashboard of the system and we're going to give a grade for the system. So once you see the, the, the grade in the system, unfortunately, when customers run this, they run this in, in their production uh, organizations, they usually get something like a, like a D or an F, and that's like around 50, 60% of the test. So here you have a report summary, and you'll see how many have passed. You see that this is a regular user. So theoretically, you know, you get this grade, and then each category has a grade as well. So you probably want to start where you have a lower grade. You could save this report as a PDF over here, and then you you know you can have that for 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 comparing. Once you do remediation, you come back, you run it again, get a better grade, and see that you've remediated some stuff. And we could you can open this up here as an HTML file, and you'll see this is a very nice report where you have that remediation information. So once this comes up. Again, you're going to have that grade. You'll have the environment, number of domains, when you ran it. So you, you want to maybe run this every month or whenever. And then here I have a security indicator that failed to run. And in my environment, I'm not running the Microsoft Labs tool. That's the uh, local admin password tool. So I don't have that in this environment, so that failed to run. So if you get that, not to be worried. And then again, the categories. So here you'll see that there's indicators found in each category, so the critical ones. So we have that Mimi Cats attack that happened, the admin SD holder. So those are the things you want to take care of quickly. And then again, the warning category, that's the middle category, anonymous access, GPO linking in the wrong place if somebody has permissions. And again, this is all Active Directory. 90, 95% of that information is, is, is readily available for anybody that is asking. So this is a regular user running this. And here, if I go into the DC shadow attack, you'll see again, so you have the description, the likelihood, the result, and then any remediation steps that need to be done for this type of attack. So, so this is, again, this is a, a free tool. You see that this is very easy to run. It'll, it'll take a few minutes. 90% of our, our customers around the world from the, the biggest one, it runs in less than an hour. So it depends a little bit about your network, how many domain controllers, if you're globally dispersed and things like that. But um, here, for example, you could see a list of users in this specific uh, example. So what we do is in this part of the report, if there's more than 10, we'll put it in the appendix. If there's more than 30, we'll put it in a nice Excel file. So this report is made not to be bloated, not to have too much information, but just to have the exact information that you need in order to know exactly what your security posture is. Um, and that is free. So where to start? So we want to, we want to you know outsmart the bad guys. That's a, that's you know it's an interesting saying because things are progressing. It's a it's a cat and dog game, or you know how they say that. So we want to be one step ahead. We want to gather as much information as we want. We want to use you know the newest techniques and tools just to be able to see that we have all the information that we need. And you ha we have this free gift for you. This is the free Purple Knight tool, free to use as many times as you want, and just to you know check out your security posture. So, with that said, we will take a few questions. And All right. Raquel, you Wonderful. can feel free to unmute if you're going to ask them. Perfect. Or I can so. start off here with the questions. Awesome. So can you hear me, Chow? I will start. So, one of the questions was in regards to the AD recovery. How does this play into this overall ransomware type of... of uh, of attack. So recovering an, an Active Directory is um, it's, it's very different from coming back from, from snapshots or from a bare metal recovery type of snapshot. So one of the big things is that when you want to recover, you have to, um, and we're talking about this could be 10 domain controllers with multiple domains, this could be hundreds of domain controllers. So when you're restoring, you need to know if you trust that operating system that you're going to come back on. And, and that could be a viable 
uh, part of a, a solution where you say, you know, maybe it was a corruption and we weren't compromised, or maybe there was, you were compromised, but you were able to clean out the system, and now you can continue to work with your production domain controllers. So that, that's one scenario. And then you, you recover to that. Another scenario would be to recover into a different environment, right? This could be uh, Azure Active Directory, uh, sorry, Azure, it could be AWS, could be Google, could be a different vSphere environment. It could be an environment where you're going to transfer your forest into that environment, and our tool does that, you're able to, to have this flexibility, and then you do your forensics in there, you clean it out, then you take another snapshot of the forest, and then you, you move that forward. So a big part of that is that when you're, you're doing uh, the forest recovery, if you look at the Microsoft uh, forest recovery guide uh, that came out, that's like almost a, a almost 100 page document of procedures that you need to do to ensure that your entire forest is um, reconstructed. So it's the exact same forest, but you're doing things to refresh it from a, a security point of view. So you're, you're rotating the curb tickets twice that's something that you need to do. You have to invalidate the rig pool, and then you have to raise it by 100,000. Uh, you have to do things like uh, metadata cleanup. So some organizations, they go from like 100 domain controllers into like maybe 20 domain controllers in this recovery environment. So that's something that, that uh, you need to do. And then you have to update the epoch and different things like that. So coming back to, to our tool, our tool has been architected to do that in an automated fashion, and it does that um, uh, you know, without any human intervention. So let me see here, different questions. So good question. So the next question is, how does this work when your AD is in the cloud? So the, 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 the answer is, it might be a mouthful, but I'll say it in any house. So what we saw at the moment was our version 3.5. 3.6 just came out right now. So what it does is we have a component called a hybrid server. So this is a, it's meant to be a maintenance free server, which is actually a Ubuntu server. Um, it's an image where we don't want you having to manage it because inside there's, uh, there's containers, there's an elastic search server. And this server, what it's doing, it's, it's taking information from Azure Active Directory, primarily through the Microsoft Graph, Graph API and through Event Hub. So the Azure Active Directory, uh, you might be familiar with it, has that diagnostics information. So we're pumping that diagnostics information into Event Hub, and then we're pumping it into an Elasticsearch server, and that, that's feeding into DSP, where you can get a single pane of glass, where you can see your, your Active Directory, your Azure Active Directory, and then any hybrid identities end to end. So I hope that uh, answers the question with Azure Active Directory. And, and then uh, there's a question here about MDI, right? Microsoft Defender for Identity. So we, we actually, you know, we, we, we love Microsoft. I was there for many, many, many years. And this is just something that's a def inside your defense and debt strategy. So we're looking at, at a, a little bit of different layer. Uh, there they're looking at networking, they're looking at events, and then we can also feed that into Sentinel. So if, the more sensors that you have, of course it makes it a little bit more complex, but once it's set up and you're in a central console, then it makes that easy. So this is, in, is it instead? And um, all right, so I see that Todd, uh, Todd answered. I'm not sure if it was in the chat or if it's because I answered. So, so again, we, we, we like to work together as a defense and depth strategy. So we're just taking something that is, is missing, right? You want to be able to see the different pillars just to make sure that, that you're not uh, missing anything. And that replication API, if you're using our tool or any other tools or if you're scripting it, it's important to gather those changes because that USN is a big part of it. That USN says that every single change must uh, be replicated to all domain controllers. So again, if we have an agent on a domain controller, just for example, that domain controller goes down, when it comes back up, it's going to receive every single change. So I'm gonna take one more question. And let me see, I'm not sure if I could see the entire question here. So uh, Thomas asked about the DSP, does it have more indicators in the system? So a big difference between the two products, the Purple Knight, again, that's updated maybe once a month, uh, plus minus. 
and then the DSP has a, a web service where you could turn that on or off, where you're going to get these these indicators as they come out. So uh, it has more indicators, but that's just because it's up to date. It's always getting indicators as they come out. And then there's certain things that we could see within DSP because it's a different system. So there's there's specific indicators in DSP, but but it still means that uh, Purple Knight is, a, is an amazing tool. It gives a lot of value. In addition, what DSP is doing, it's running these indicators on an ongoing basis. So you're going to be able to see trends. You're going to be able to remediate, get that indicator to green. And then when that indicator goes to red, you're going to get that, you know, that, uh, that pop-up saying, hey, something changed in the system. We, there's an attack going on. We need to take care of it. And then um, you know, run those actions on top of it. So there are more indicators, but it, it's, um, it's, it's mainly because they come out um, through that web service, almost like an antivirus, right? But there are some organizations where they're disconnected and they don't, uh, they don't want to uh, you know, be connected to the internet, not through a proxy or anything like that. So you can update those packages maybe on a periodic basis, maybe, maybe every quarter or whatever, uh, you know, check those things. So that's the uh, DSP. So there's a quick question here on, on Seams, and I mean, this is gonna will be the last question over here. So Seams, we have that Syslog integration, so you can integrate with any type of Seam uh, with Syslog, and that's it. So what's the least amount of, uh, that you need to run that tool? The Purple Knight, again, regular user, no admin privileges, and you are ready to go. So I want to uh, thank you for your time, and thank you for joining. And I wish you a good morning, good night, evening. And we we'll look forward to seeing you on the next webcast. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Tal, for being with us today. And thank you also to the audience for attending today's webcast, which was sponsored by Paris and presented by Redmond Magazine. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.